Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey, put that, put that away. Yeah, a knife fight broke out. Hi friends. This particular day we were out here sharing the gospel and telling people about the powerful name of the Lord Jesus. My brother was just preaching on the sin of quarreling and strife. But let's listen in and I'll walk you through what happened next. Hostility, quarreling, quarreling, what does quarreling mean? It's division, strife, causing division, it's all satanic. The devil comes, he does three things. He comes to seek, to kill, and destroy. He comes to seek, to kill, and destroy. He causes division. He takes truth. And he mixes it with lies. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. A couple minutes later, as my brother was still preaching, this angry guy shows up doing just that, quarreling and causing strife and division. He was giving people a lot of grief for a long time. We were telling people that Jesus takes away all sin, anger, bitterness, rage, as we were sharing the gospel. Here's a little bit of that video as we get to what happened next. Jesus Christ rose from the grave, defeated the power of sin and death over us. He takes away anger, bitterness, lust. He removes it all. He cleans us. He makes us new creations in Christ Jesus. Jesus died on that cross. To give us the power to overcome sin and the devil. Yeah. Jesus Christ rose from the grave. Defeated the power of sin and death over us. Now even more people are trying to jump in on this fight. My brother just got done saying that quarreling causes strife and division and is demonic and you cannot overcome evil with evil. We were trying to tell them that there is power in the name of Jesus, but I guess they were all too distracted by the fighting. Take a listen. The name of Jesus has power. The name of Jesus has power, guys. Hey, can I pray for you, man? The Bible says in Philippians 2, At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. In John 14, Jesus said, You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it, so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Look what we're told in Luke chapter 9 about the powerful name of Jesus. John said to Jesus, Master, we saw someone using your name to cast out demons. And in Acts 3, through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed, and you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. And he continues in the next chapter, verse 10. Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. So if the name of Jesus has great power and is powerful to save us, how come more people don't call upon the name of Jesus? Because in chapter 2, it says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, put that, put that away. Hey, 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 put that away. In the name of Jesus. I, I command you in the name of Jesus. I command you in the name of Jesus. Stop. In the name of Jesus. Put that away. Walk off. In the name of Jesus. Walk off. So the name of Jesus has great power. So why don't more people call on the name of Jesus to be saved? We are told in Romans chapter 10, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. 
But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will someone go and tell them without being sent? This is why the scriptures say, How beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring the good news. But not everyone welcomes the good news. Why would someone not welcome the good news? Why would someone not want to be saved? Well, Matthew chapter 1 says, And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Yes, Jesus came to save us from our sins. That is what we're told in Romans chapter 6. Thank God once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey the teachings we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. Free from slavery to sin. So why would someone not welcome that good news? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. God united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy, and he freed us from our sins. Why would someone not welcome that good news? Let's go over to chapter 6. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin, or who worship idols, or commit adultery, or are male prostitute, or practice homosexuality, or are thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards, or are abusive, or cheap people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed, you were made holy, you were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. This is the reason why not everyone welcomes the good news, why they wouldn't call on the name of Jesus. Oh, people love their sexual sin. They love to worship idols or commit adultery. They love to run after the things of this world. They love their greed or they love their alcohol. This is why people don't welcome the good news. They don't want to call on the name of Jesus to be saved from the things they love. This is why so many don't welcome the good news. The message, the good news, is simple, it's plain. Call on the name of Jesus and you will be saved. But people say, I'm doing my best. Or they'll say, it takes time. Yeah, if you don't want to leave the things you love behind, if you don't want to leave your favorite sins behind, it will take time. But the Bible says, today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may never come. This is why Jesus said, anyone who puts the hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So I did pray for that guy, for that angry guy, and he was very grateful. Friend, I encourage you, don't delay. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Friend, thank you for listening.